I'm a senior product manager in AWS networking team. You are watching session NET308, introducing Gateway Load Balancer for deploying and running virtual appliances. We have a packed agenda today. We the customer challenges that we saw, then the solution that we've come up with, uh, the use cases that this Gateway Load Balancer addresses, uh, then talk about the partners that are integrated with this solution at this time and steps that you can take. Just a reminder, this is a 300 level session. I will go into some uh, level of details, although you may, have, you may have seen that we recently launched this new, new service called Gateway Load Balancer. So I will start and build on top and then go into the details. So let's get to it. When we talk to customers, what we have found out and customers told us is that they use third-party virtual appliances. And when I say appliances, uh, I'm talking about any virtual network function that's running on an EC2 instance. And some of the examples of appliances are uh, things like firewalls, intrusion detection and intrusion prevention system as IDS, IPS, DDoS prevention systems, visibility tools, analytics, performance, monitoring, etc. There are a whole bunch of appliances that our customers use because they like the specialized functions of They have used the features of those third-party appliances from different vendors or Amazon partners who make these appliances. Our customers have built skill set in using those appliances over a period of years. They've built their operating processes around those appliances and they have made existing investments in these third-party appliances over a period of number of years. Our customers have said that they want to use these appliances in Amazon's uh, network. So what they've told us uh, is that when they try to use this uh, in cloud, many of these appliances evolved from hardware background and they became virtualized functions. So when you deploy these hardware-based appliances in the cloud, the way the systems were architected for on-prem and data center world and how they are implemented in cloud world, the design philosophy was different. So when customers deploy these appliances in a cloud, they typically have three choices. Either they deploy it in pairs or they deploy the appliances, what is colloquially called as a sandwich deployment, or they build the software and tools using do-it-yourself methods. And what we find out is if they deploy the appliance pairs, um, they typically face challenges because this appliance pair deployment is usually fixed throughput, fixed scale, it is a single point of failure. They have to replicate these appliances everywhere and then they're difficult to manage. A sandwich deployment typically tries to get better scale by adding a set of load balancers. So there are load balancer on the top and the bottom and then they add an appliance in between. That's why it's a sandwich topology. Um, and then this topology is complex. It is misconfiguration prone it gives you only the administrative domain of a single VPC and it's expensive. So when some customers then say, okay, forget it, I'll try to do it by myself, they try to build some tools in-house, they, they get something from open source, they put some things together, uh, they put some tools. Uh, however, this also tends to be very complex. It's misconfiguration prone. It's difficult to keep uh, track of uh, going forward and then it tends to be expensive. So looking at this as AWS, 90% of our innovation comes from what customers tell us. So this is where we, we came up with the idea of a gateway load balancer. And that is the new networking service that we recently launched. It's called a gateway load balancer. And as the name would suggest, it's a gateway and it's a load balancer. So it's a combination of two entities and it provides significant number of opportunities. It's, it opens up a whole new frontier 
for our customers and partners to deploy appliances. So when a traffic source is sending traffic to a destination, what the gateway load balancer based topology is using simple routing techniques, you deploy gateway load balancer and the gateway load balancer has a layer three gateway characteristics. That is, it can be a next hop in a route table and it's a packet in packet out service. It performs no packet rewrites. At the same time, when the gateway load balancer receives the traffic, then it acts as a layer four load balancer. And because it acts as a load, layer four load balancer, it provides scale to the appliance, it provides elasticity to the appliances, it provides stickiness of flows in both the directions. So the appliances can see the traffic in both directions and act on it. Layer four load balancer characteristics again uh, bring health check. So the gateway load balancer can make periodic health checks on appliances if one of the appliances goes down it will start rerouting the flows. And when it does that, it encapsulates original traffic in a layer three header. So what that allows us is essentially the third party appliance receives the original traffic as is. The original traffic is encapsulated in a layer three encapsulation called Geneve. There is a protocol called Geneve, IETF protocol. So the layer three packet is seen by the appliances as is no change in source IP, no change in port numbers. The appliance is completely able to see the traffic as is. So the appliance then therefore can decapsulate, see the traffic, inspect it and send it back to its destination. So because of this gateway load balancer characteristics now, it provides horizontal scale to the appliances. It provides reliability it provides transparent insertion of services. Because the traffic is getting from gateway load balancer to the appliances in a layer three encapsulation, the source and the destination do not have to change their software at all. They simply send a traffic as if they don't even know this node exists in between. This can be deployed as a service in one VPC and can be provided into another VPC into another account altogether. And I will talk more about that in subsequent slides. And then this is a way to provide scalability, reliability, transfer insertion of service at as, as if it's a AWS cloud native service. So before we go into the details of a gateway load balancer, the short version of this is using gateway load balancers, customers can deploy and manage fleet of virtual appliances in elastic, fault tolerant and transparent manner. Uh, we decided that this service not only is available to our customers, but will also make it available to our partners. So if you have an appliance as a third party partner that you want to bring in, it's easy for you to do. But if you're also a customer who have been using your custom applications or your some, some open source tools, you can bring those uh, into uh, gateway load balancer based benefits and I'll talk about how to do that in subsequent slides. There are multiple benefits of using gateway load balancers to our end customers. Number one is it customers can continue to use existing third party appliance skills that they have built. They can leverage existing tools and practices that they have put in place. They can simplify appliance deployments by consolidating and centralizing their deployment appliance fleets in a VPC. They can deploy appliances at a scale, an elastic scale, um, and then improve the availability of appliances automatically uh, because of the load balancer characteristics. And they can share appliances across VPCs and across accounts. So if you are a provider, you can host your services and put them in a different account and offer them in a different account using a VPC endpoint called Gateway Load Balancer Endpoint. And I will talk about that. There are many use cases we continue to see from our customers. Uh, we have prioritized three security use cases. Although I'm gonna talk about security use cases here, um, Gateway Load Balancer works much broader than just the security use cases. You can use gateway load balancer for a whole bunch of things other than security, but we're gonna focus on security for the sake of this presentation. 
So there are three use cases, north-south or NS, north-south inspection. And when we say north-south inspection, we're talking about VPC to internet um, using an internet gateway or IGW. The second use case is north-south inspection using a transit gateway. And the third use case is traffic going between two VPCs inspected by gateway load balancer when it's attached to a transit gateway. So let's go into each use case one at a time. This is where we'll go into slightly more details and then I'll again come back and, and summarize what are the benefits. In this picture, what you're seeing is on the right side is the appliance or a security VPC where we have a gateway load balancer or the acronym is GWLB. So that gateway load balancer is front-ending a fleet of firewall appliances. So there are firewall appliances on the rightmost corner, then they are front-ended by gateway load balancer in one VPC. This appliance fleet is being used in three different VPCs on the left side. So there is VPC1, VPC2, and VPC3, where the instances in those VPCs are interacting with the inter uh, hosts or some services in the internet. But in between, you will see the endpoint or something called as GWLBE, or the Gateway Load Balancer endpoint, as you can see there, that can be a next hop in the route table. So the traffic coming from the internet goes to internet gateway, goes to the gateway load balancer endpoint one, which goes on to gateway load balancer, which sends the traffic encapsulated to the firewall fleet, which the firewall fleet inspects the traffic, re-encapsulates again, sends it back to gateway load balancer. The gateway load balancer will send the traffic back to gateway load balancer endpoint one, and then it will forward the traffic to instance one. This way, the same fleet on the right side can be leveraged across three different VPCs or multiple VPCs. I'm showing only three, but you can have um, lots and lots of VPCs leveraging the same firewall fleet or same appliance fleet. This is what we call it as a centralized inspection of traffic. So this picture now, let's look at a little bit into details of how exactly does this work. In this picture you will see that um, there are route tables at the internet gateway, the topmost route table, that says that any traffic that's going to 10.0.0.64 is going to the gateway load balancer endpoint. The gateway load balancer endpoint also has a route table for which the next hop is, um, it sends it to the gateway load balancer when the traffic comes back to the gateway load balancer endpoint, it will send it to a, a local traffic and the app instances, EC2 instances at the bottom left are the application subnet. So it's essentially you can send a traffic anywhere based on simply on the route table. So gateway load balancer endpoint and the gateway load balancer endpoints can be in, in the inter, uh, inserted in the topology just using route tables. So now this is a topology that shows the route tables. Now the question would become is how do I deploy this and how is gateway load balancer uh, can be deployed in multiple availability zones. So first of all, gateway load balancer and the endpoints are a zonal construct, very much similar to like a NAT gateway. So if you deploy them, just deploy them in multiple availability zones and replicate the setup. The second use case is similar north south inspection, but in this case, the appliance fleet is connected to a transit gateway on the right hand side. So you will see that there is a transit gateway in the middle um, that is connected to a whole bunch of VPCs on the left side. In the center, you will see a VPC number four that is connected to, to an internet. Maybe the transit gateway is also attached to a direct connect or a, v, or a VPN or something like that. And on the appliance, or security VPC on the right side is where you can inspect the traffic that's going from VPC to internet or traffic that's coming from internet to VPC using route table updates. Many of our customers have said that I also want to inspect inter-VPC traffic, that is the traffic going between the two VPCs, 
using the same setup. So the setup remains essentially very similar in that you have now on the right hand side, you have two VPCs, appliance VPC one or a security VPC one that is used for inspecting the north-south traffic or the north-south flow and the VPC at the bottom, appliance or security VPC number two, this is used for east-west inspection. That is when the traffic is going from VPC one to VPC two or VPC or any other VPC, using the route domains on transit gateway, essentially manipulating the route tables or updating the route tables on transit gateway, we can steer a flow to either an east-west fleet or a north-south fleet. That way, the traffic can be inspected in a different um, appliance VPCs. Many of our customers have told us that um, we would like to keep the north-south and east-west inspection fleet separate because we may have different policies, our traffic patterns are different. So we would like to keep them uh, separate. So when we launched this service recently, there are partners who are integrated with the gateway load balancer from day one. So there are advanced the partners that are listed here uh, that provide advanced security capabilities using gateway load balancer. So you use their appliances that are, are in marketplace or however you get them today. Those methods of obtaining the software from those appliances but those work with gateway load balancer today. Number two, we also have a set of analytics partners and providers who provide analytics capabilities using gateway load balancer. So those partners have also completed their integration, extensive blogs and collateral on their website as well as links provided from Amazon website. In addition, there are orchestration partners the partners who have their software that can orchestrate networks using gateway load balancer. So partners that um, are integrated from day one. And then there are system integration partners who uh, can implement architecture using gateway load balancer. This is just the beginning list. We have more partners in work and uh, they will continue to be uh, with gateway load balancers. So what are the benefits of um, gateway load balancers for AWS partners? Number one is they get cloud native elastic scale and availability without having to solve these complex. They can focus uh, on their own core, core skill set. Number two is it simplifies appliance deployments. The appliance, as we saw in the previous topologies, you can deploy the appliances in a separate VPC. So that simplifies the topology quite a bit. It provides software updates, patching process, etc. very simple for and the administrative domain of those appliances can be maintained by those VPC owners. Partners can also innovate because with gateway load balancer, they don't have to worry about solving the complex problems of cloud native elastic scale, availability, service delivery. They can just focus on their core expertise and offload the problems of scale, elasticity, service availability to Amazon. And using this, the partners can offer appliances as a managed service. You probably can remember from the previous slide uh, where they have appliances on the right hand side VPC they can that can be offered as a service into another VPC. So the common question that becomes is what does this appliance integration require? The appliance integration requires uh, fairly straightforward and a low effort work from uh, the appliance vendors or if you write your own appliance. Number one is you support Gini protocol on the appliance. Encode, decode Gini options uh, also known as TLVs or type length value pairs and then respond to health checks from gateway load balancer and then that's it. So once you're done with that, you can start getting the benefits of a gateway load balancer. If you want to write your own custom logic and then run it behind gateway load balancer, there is a blog that we have written 
So you can also see on the screen a QR code. Feel free to take your smartphone and, and point to that um, QR code. It will take you to that blog. So I'll, I'll wait here for a second or two for you to give opportunity to take a screen capture of that. I just point your smartphone camera and it will take you to the blog. It'll, this blog will describe you exactly how to integrate your appliance with Gateway Load Balancer. It's a fairly straightforward process. So in summary, Gateway Load Balancer is a new addition to Elastic Load Balancing portfolio or ELB portfolio that we have. On the left, you will see we already have an application load balancer that's focused on L7 load balancing for HTTP and HTTPS traffic. In the middle, you will see an NLB or a network load balancer that is focused on layer four load balancing capabilities for TCP, UDP, and TLS traffic. And on the right side, we have this newest addition to the EL portfolio, the load balancing portfolio called Gateway Load Balancer. It's essentially, you can think of it as a layer three load balancer for all IP traffic. It will handle all IP traffic packet by packet and is used with third party appliances. So to summarize, a Gateway Load Balancer is essentially a combination of a layer three gateway and a layer four load balancer. The gateway load balancer endpoint that's shown in the red color here is essentially a VPC endpoint that can be a next hop in a route table. And you can see by definition, the gateway load balancer in yellow color is in provider VPC. And the gateway load balancer endpoint is in a consumer VPC. And you can stitch your flow or you can send your traffic to gateway load balancer using simple route table updates. Essentially, if you know how to do routing, if you know how to update route tables, then you can use Gateway Load Balancer. By using Gateway Load Balancer, you get five benefits. It provides horizontal scale to the appliances. It provides fault tolerance to appliances. You can insert your services transparently, as we saw because of the layer three encapsulation capabilities. You can share your appliance fleet across VPCs and across accounts and providers or even internal teams can offer appliance as a service to another VPC. So if you're an organization who acquires companies or who have different departments, there can be a clear separation of service provider and service consumer. How would you use this gateway load balancer? You create gateway load balancer and appliance fleet using the steps that some of you may already have been using Amazon's ELB or Elastic Load Balancing. So you do the exact same steps to create Gateway Load Balancer and start sending traffic by simply updating the route table. So what can you do to learn more about it and get started quickly? There are multiple resources and content that we have made available for you on day one and it's already there. Again, time to bring your smartphone out because I'm going to show you a whole bunch of QR codes. I'm going to give you a lot of resources that you can start using. So one such example here is we provide a whole number of examples of code uh, that are on GitHub and uh, feel free to scan this. On this website, you will find uh, we have code samples in Python, in Go, in CLI, and also uh, AWS CloudFormation. So there are examples starting from just the basic simple primitives all the way to complex fully baked architectures that are more complex than I showed in the previous use case topologies. Similarly, on the right hand side, um, also scan your um, QR code on the right side, we also have integration with Terraform. So if you are a user of a Terraform for integrating, um, you use their software as a code or infrastructure as a code, there is a gateway load balancer support available today. So feel free to scan here, go there and, and see uh, the code that you want to leverage. 
You can start using the gateway load balancer in minutes. Again, feel free to bring your, show your, uh, QR, scan the QR code. That will take you to this video um, that essentially shows you how to get started with gateway load balancer. It's an 11 minute video and it shows you, walks you through five steps of how would you create gateway load balancer and get started. So the number one step is you locate a partner's virtual appliance in AWS marketplace. Uh, the partners that I showed in the previous slide, they are the partners, their softwares will work with gateway load balancer. Without integration, um, the software from any other vendor that uh, or partner that you have will not work. So just remember there is a requirement that the technical integration has to be complete and there are uh, partners that I listed in the previous slide. But the list, you will go on AWS Marketplace, that list will be continuously updated. You just locate their virtual appliance as step number one. Step number two is you launch the appliance instances in your VPC and then create gateway load balancer and target group with appliance instances. So if you used Amazon's elastic load balancing, it's a very similar step of creating load balancer and creating target groups with application instances or appliance instances. Number four is then the VPC where you want to inspect a traffic, you create a gateway load balancer endpoint or GWLBE. Uh, e, is, e stands for the endpoint. So you create a gateway load balancer endpoint in a VPC where you want to inspect the traffic uh, using um, the command, uh, essentially create VPC endpoint command or there is a console for that. And in the VPC where you want to inspect the traffic, you can simply update your route table and up send the traffic to gateway load balancer endpoint. You can do this by setting the gateway load balancer endpoint as your default next hop. Then the another resource for you is a series of blogs that we continue to publish. Uh, this is, if you scan this QR code, it will take you to a series of blogs related to gateway load balancer. This is a running list now there is a tag called gateway load balancer. So feel free to click on the gateway load balancer tag in the content delivery uh, blocks and it will show you all the blocks that are related. One of the blocks I mentioned, it shows you how to integrate your appliance with gateway load balancer. There's another blog shows you how do you scale your appliance um, for traffic inspection. And there's another blog that also talks about the supported architecture patterns. We have seen many different architectural patterns that customers have been using. So you can go through that blog and, and see which architectural pattern works for you. So coming to conclusion, these are this slide shows the summary of all the resources that are available to you. So there are five QR codes. Each will take you to its own page. So on the top left is Product overview will take you to Gateway Load Balancer homepage. Um, the second one on the below that is a, a link or a QR code that will take you to the all technical documentation. On the right hand side top, you will see the getting started video that I just showed you early on. The second there is the GitHub code samples. There are a whole bunch of code samples that you can see. And then at the bottom, you will see all the blogs that are related to gateway load balancer. So what we just saw essentially is what are the customer solutions, customer challenges, what is the Amazon solution, what are some resources are available today, what are the use cases. All of that is available to you today. If you are interested, also watch these sessions, Net306 session. This shows how do you uh, an architecture that's right for inspection and then session number net 309 it shows you advanced vpc with new capabilities for amazon vpc this will also include elements of a gateway load balancer in that function so with that we conclude thank you very much for your time